Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementine, and as always, I am Super Saiyan, but never mind that in this video, we're gonna take some plain plywood veneer and turn it into the curliest 5A maple ever seen in the history of trees, as well as rustic barn wood with a deep gnarly texture, then utilizing a plain Canon desktop scanner, as well as the free trial version of Lightburn laser CAD cutting software, we'll map and duplicate several items, such as guitar picks, guitar pickup flat work, which we then turn into guitar pickups, amplifier emblem, as well as taking a logo from a paper bag from the co-op and engraving that on a pine telecaster body to make a super country boy honky tonk twang machine. Then to round it out, I'll show an example of some lettering as well as multi-shade graphical engraving done on an aluminum pedal enclosure with a thick powder coating as well as a detailed engraving on the mask of copper clad circuit board which could be then etched to create the PCB. I'll even try cutting some 3 8 inch plywood and purposefully make a fire to see how the safety system works. As this is my review of what I feel like is probably the single greatest tool that any creative musician could have. The Creality Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt laser engraver and CNC cutting machine. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned! Roll that beautiful bean footage. Well, I gotta say, first thing that caught me off guard was the respective weight of these boxes. About 45 and 75 pounds felt like to me. I knew right then that whatever was inside these is pretty sturdy. And once I got them open, I wasn't disappointed. This thing is made out of thick sheet steel. And the next thing that struck me was just how pretty it all was. Once I got this top put together, it looks like the windows on a 50s like C-class gasser. Once I set it down on there and put the side windows in, get all the screws in it, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It looks like a drag car. It's like a hot rod. Then when you flip that light on, it is just insanely cool looking for some utility equipment. First test is press the home button everything worked flawless directly out of the box. Another thing that I thought was awesome is like a dragster or a big industrial CNC machine, it has a set of keys and a big aluminum mushroom head safety stop switch. Next thing to do is hook it up to a computer. It connected flawlessly, same with the camera. I thought I had a little bit of a problem at first, but then I just put the chat GPT in my ears, tell me how to do all the settings, set everything up, work flawlessly and perfectly. But then as a test of the pure machine, I just put uh, the test program on a a flash card, stuck it in the side of the machine without it hooked up to the computer and ran it standalone, which is a pretty cool feature, especially if you were running like five of these at once. So the first thing I wanted to test is if this thing could etch through thick powder coating on aluminum bud boxes for pedals, because if you can, like this is the super screen printing logo cheat code for making guitar pedals. So I simply used a camera on Lightburn and man, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never used a laser engraver before. I haven't used a CAD program at all since in the mid 2000s at trade school in welding class and it was much more difficult than this uh light burn is completely intuitive you just kind of type it in on there set your speed set your power and then set go and i have to say it etched perfectly you can see this haze around here all i did was take a little bit of uh, dish liquid and a soft brush and scrub it that turned out amazing this is going to make all my pedal building in the future much more professional that worked so well my next thought was will it do multi-tone graphics so i'll go ahead and copy and paste a picture from a meme into uh, Lightburn, and Lightburn has an amazing photo adjustment and enhancement program inside of it. And this time I decided to use the frame function to let the laser head show me exactly where the graphic would be and just move the box under the desired target. It took several tries, but I got it exactly on the right side like I wanted it, leaving a gap on the left side to put some knobs. And once again, when I pull it out of there, it's all hazy looking, but I go and scrub it, and it looks amazing. <laughs> like this is gonna up my pedal game quite a bit. And you can see here in Lightburn, you could go back in and put in your drilling points and in your volume, tone, gain, whatever you wanna put on there. Just run it again and you're good to go. And for the next test, I get my Latin Polska Gypsy. Well, I have to throw a guitar pick in her scanner. Then I import that into Lightburn and use the trace function to turn that into a simple line vector. So once I start this machine to running, you can see it's making a whole lot of smoke. 
And that's one thing that I'd like to bring up is that the little fan in this thing is amazing. I had an argument with ChatGPT about this, that I could run that hose to a dryer vent that would push all the smoke out. Does just fine. Either way, it's doing a lot of smoking and not much cutting. So I take this pine veneer out and look at it. I'm like, man, that's a thick line and it's not very deep. What went wrong here? Well, uh, operator error, that's what went wrong. I, just, I forgot to uh, lower the laser head down to the appropriate level using this included gauge. Once I did that, reset everything, boom, cut a perfect guitar pick very quickly. And one might think, well, that's all neat and everything, but a uh, wooden pick ain't very useful as it doesn't have any flex to it. You want bet? I was so pleased with the results that I put in one of the included pieces of plywood veneer and set it to cut out eight of them. And I gotta say, the engraving takes a little time, but the cutting is super fast. Within just a couple of minutes, I got a couple months worth of plywood picks. This is about the time that I got the idea. Okay, so if this thing can print a picture onto wood, what if I print a picture of pretty wood grain onto wood? So I enhanced the photograph put in one of these pieces of plywood veneer that they included 50 of these with the machine. That's why that other box was so heavy. I lined it all up, centered the thing so you could see a contrast between the engraved and unengraved sections. So hit go and that's all there is to it. You stand back and watch it work. And I set it to go nice and slow so it would make a dark black deep line. And man, did it not work excellent. Not only does it look like old weathered barn wood, it feels like old weathered barn wood. So then my thought was, okay, let's take a picture of some curly maple, enhance that to a hyper realistic level, then use it to completely cover a veneer and see if I can't turn this plain plywood veneer into the curliest 5A maple as ever made in the history of trees. It also worked surprisingly well. And from maybe Anywhere past three feet, all this looks like is just the curliest piece of maple I've ever seen. If you did this to the whole front of a guitar, it would be incredible. But I know exactly what I need to use this for. So I take a set of bobbins that the channel sponsor, Ron, at guitarbuildingtemplates.com cut for me. And I have my wife put those in the scanner, scan those. Once again, I just used the trace feature in Lightburn and to my surprise, it creates perfect vector images. I quickly run that G code and much to my surprise, they come out basically completely flawless. Stick some pole pieces in there, put it together and boom, there's your completed pickup bobbin ready for winding. After a little bit of optimization and the speed and intensity of the laser, I got it where it could cut pickup bobbins in no time flat, incredibly fast. So then for the piece de resistance, I take the curly veneer that I've made, line up the bobbin vectors on there on the light burn, run code on that, and they came out incredible. Once this is put together, this is one of the prettiest wooden pickup bobbins I've ever seen. Once you dip this in polyurethane, it would be completely beautiful. This is like famous rich rock star stuff. So seeing how ridiculously accurate that worked, I handed my wife a Marshall logo and said, scan this. She put a piece of black construction paper behind it to make a high contrast image and the trace function worked amazing on it. And one thing I'm highly impressed with is the cutting path optimization that's built into this program and how well it works with this machine. It knows to cut all the centers out before it ever does any of the outline so that everything comes out just perfect. And man alive did it not come out absolutely perfect. I laid it up corner to corner on this uh, pre-engraved barn wood pattern. And that looks like something that would have hung up in Terry Marshall's office right there. That's beautiful. So running on the adrenaline high from that endeavor, I had her scan a piece of brown paper bag from the co-op that has a logo on it. I then take that to light burn, turn it into a traced outline that has a very rustic brand, like a cattle brand type look to it by adjusting the parameters to get a kind of a dithered quality. I run that on a test piece. It comes out amazing, but then my wife decided to try painting it. It come out looking like something digital in real life. It is not real looking. It, it looks like the piece of paper is gonna fly off the wood. 
So, after seeing this, I've got to go grab a Pine Telecaster body out of the shop. Stick this baby down in here, and I will, yeah, I will not admit how long I actually fiddled around with the logo to get it exactly the way I want it. But when I did, I was able to just press go and watch her do the thing. When it's done, pull it out of there. And that's just every country boy's dream right there. A co-op cattle brand on a pine telecaster body. Then once I got my old lady to paint this thing, it is just every kind of converse and high waters and trucker hat beautiful that I thought it might be. I don't know if it gets you like it gets me, but being where I'm from, uh, this is amazing. Very Paps Blue Ribbon looking. And for our final creative endeavor, I had her blue tack a piece of copper clad circuit board down to a sheet of plywood, start applying a flat black acrylic mask. Then I took a 69 fuzz face circuit, inverted the colors, dropped that into light burn, and started doing a test piece on a sheet of plywood. And it came out with an incredible amount of detail, especially because this was a pixelated small image I started with. Once that etching mask was dried, I stuck it in the Creality Falcon 2 Pro and sent it to etching, set to about 40%. And once again, I'm just completely blown away by the sheer versatility and capability of this Falcon 2 Pro machine. That's ready to etch. Then you got a fuzz face put inside that box I did earlier. So now to see what she's really made out of, I take a piece of 3 8 inch exterior decking crank the machine up to 100%, throw it in there and start cutting a circle. I expected this to make a fire and trigger the safety system, but no, with that air compressor assist, it just cut a hole straight through it. So let's try that again. <laughs> Let me take a three quarter inch solid pine board and put it in there, turn it up to 100 again and move it really slow, like down to 15. Finally, I get a fire and I trigger the fire warning. And you see it uses the onboard compressor to blow the fire out and then move the laser head to safety. Oh, and speaking of onboard compressor, check this out. This machine is not very loud. You could use this when somebody's sleeping in the house, except for the alarm, which would let you know something has happened. It said fire, fire. So what's my opinion of the Creality Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt? If you're a creative musician or somebody that makes things like anything, Get you one of these, man. You can cut cardboard stencils with it. You can make tool caddies, make your own pickups, make your own pedals. I can't wait to see what all stuff I come up with in the future. It, your own creativity is the limit here. So thank you so much, Creality, for sending me this for review. I want you all to know I didn't accept a dime for this. And if you guys want to send me anything else, go for it. Hook me up with one of them 3D printers. <laughs> Well, anyway, I am Clementine. You've been watching Heavy Metal ATC. Till next time.